meeting of the Board of Trustees. Uh, the first item on our agenda is the invitation of Pledge of Allegiance, and I'm going to turn that over to Mr. Keene to announce our students. Welcome our two students from Brooklyn Casey High School. First of all, we'll do an invitation to meet Jackson Allen and Marshall. Jackson is a senior at Brooklyn Casey High School where he maintains a 4.3 GPA. He is a legacy student, a member of HOSA, the Math Honor Society, the National Honor Society, and the Latin Club. Jackson has played on the varsity tennis team since his seventh grade year. <clears throat> he enjoys hanging out with his friends and he works for Blue Marble Landscaping in his spare time. After high school, Jackson plans to attend the University of South Carolina and major in biology. He hopes to one day be a pediatrician. We also have Abigail Nicole Garrison. She's been doing the Pledge of Allegiance for us. Abby is a senior at Brooklyn Casey High School, where she maintains a 4.95 GPA. She is a Quest student, a member of the Math Honor Society, the National Honor Society, and she is a varsity cheerleader. Abby attends Trinity Baptist Church, where she is active in the youth group and is a member of the student leadership team. In her spare time, Abby enjoys spending time with family and friends. After high school, she plans to attend Anderson University and major in graphics design. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for allowing us to gather here tonight. I ask that you please wash over those in this room, help these board members to give them wisdom to make the right decisions. Thank you for everything you blessed with. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
was bring together what I had done with the schools that needed help. So we put together a program, and the program shows set, uh, six or seven steps that we follow. The forms that are out there that the kids need to abide by, to, to get into college, the prospect form, they have to do the FAFSA, they have to do uh, the eligibility on the NCAA or the NAIA sites. And those are important. These kids do not know that they have to do it. When my son graduated, he was, like I said, a two-sport athlete. He had played football and he had been on the track team. But going into his graduation, he didn't have any offers. So with all the work that I did, he got him two offers. One was at Brevard, one was at San Andrew, both in North Carolina. After all that work, he decided not to go play football. <laughs> well, we went down to uh, USC Buford on a tour and got him on track. A young man that had never thrown a hammer in high school at all finished sixth in his conference throwing a hammer in college his first year. So far, this program has worked with 10 kids in three schools. And all 10 of those kids have either gotten into college or will be starting in the fall at the university. One of those young men came to us last year from airport high school. He wanted to go play football. It's funny because he lied in his he put down that he was carrying a 3.0 GPA. I did a little looking, a little form request, and I found out he was carrying, at the end of his first semester, a 2.15. So anybody knows you've got to have a 2.50 minimum to play a sport in college. So we set a goal for him. By the end of his junior year, he got that up to 2.37. Just because of encouragement and stay back. At the end of his first semester this year, he had a 2.48. And I talked to him and I said, all right, now, yeah, we've talked to the colleges and you get the feedback from the students. He said, well, I've decided I don't want to play football. I said, okay, what do you do? He said, I'm going to go into the college, but I'm going to get my degree in engineering. I don't want to take a chance on getting hurt. <laughs> I said, well, that's fine. That's what our program is designed to do. It's designed to make them focus on the education side. We don't deal with Division I. We deal with Division II and NAI. Because those are the kids that traditionally fall in. I have dealt with, with colleges in South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia, in the Division II and NAI. And those schools are very excited about them. Because what we do is we encourage the grades, we encourage the career mentoring. So if a kid wants to be a doctor, we put him in front of a doctor and let that doctor tell him what he's got to do, how hard it's going to be to do what he wants to do. We put him in front of lawyers, and a two star general. I mean, the opportunity to speak with those people is absolutely key to making the right decisions. These kids, more than anything, are just looking for somebody to care. And that's what we show them, is the love that we can have and the care that they need. And with that, I would like to ask you all to give us your endorsement for this program so that we can work on the broken case as well. Because we've been working in the airport for three years. Brad Coleman brought us in. We have been very successful to get the new back. Thank you. We don't take any action as a result of this participation. So we'll have to do that to our administration. Any board action.
Next on the agenda is a report on honors to honors and accomplishments from the recognition of the South Carolina Junior Scholars. Yes, sir, Mr. Bingham. Uh, Dr. Brooks is going to recognize this year's Junior Scholars. Uh, these are some of the brightest young people in the state of South Carolina. You probably aren't in this situation, but for me, what they're, they're scoring the PSAT in one area was about my total. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, th these young folks have either scored 550 on writing and reading or 530 on mathematics. So they are exceedingly bright young folks, and uh, Dr. Brooks is going to recognize them. Thank you, sir. Parents, we want to welcome you and congratulate you as well, and also our family and friends that are here for our students. Of course, we want to congratulate and welcome our students as well, because it is no small feat that you have accomplished. That is for sure what Dr. James shared, the criteria um, to be selected as one of our South Carolina Junior Scholars is the um, 530 that it takes in reading and writing, not either or, but both, or um, the 550, I should say, is a 530 in math. So it really is not a lot of students across the state of South Carolina that earn this recognition. So we're very, very proud of you, and you should be proud of yourself as well. If I can get our principals to come up, our guidance counselors to come up, all of our students tonight are receiving from um, the state of South Carolina a certificate as well as a bumper sticker. And so um, I hope parents that you will hold on to that bumper sticker, the sticker's for you. <laughs> I also know the certificate is too, but um, hopefully uh, you will be proud of that because you certainly should be. Students, when I call your name, I'm going to say a little bit about you on what you put on your bio sheet. Um, and you'll come up and then just remain up here and we'll get everybody here so make one long line for me across the front if you don't mind. Um, so principals, we're, we're not going to go school by school necessarily, but if you'll help us, we are going to go sort of school by school, but if you'll help us when we get there. All right, our first student is Anna Hobbit. Anna likes to write books, and she happens to have done that with some artwork, I know, um, this year, and she wants to become an author. Yeah, you want to take her here. So, and her hobbies are reading and writing. She also enjoys archery. And she also is participating in the Connecticut Derby Day that's coming up in West Columbia. And she also is a participant in Sheared Worlds at Wofford College. Adrian Avara is our next student. He wants to get into real estate. I think he us off. And he um, enjoys and is great at talking with new people. Something that I cannot. Violet. Kelly is our next student. She wants to be a CEO when she grows up. I'm not sure CEO of what kind of organization or business, but we are sure she's going to do well. And she has been learning hip hop dance for three years, so very good. Xavier Mathis, you'll come up, Xavier. He wants to be a welder when he grows up. I would recommend underwater welding. You can make lots of money doing that. <laughs> Uh, he also enjoys playing football, basketball, and is involved in archery. Our next student is Ellie Altry. She wants to be a veterinarian. Oh. She wants to be a vet veterinarian. She enjoys soccer, swimming, playing cello, and art. Very good. Well rounded. Our next student is Isabella Brown. Isabella. Um, wants to do something related to art, either digital or traditional. Sydney Evans. Sydney wants to be an elementary school teacher. Middle <laughs> level. <laughs> she is a cheerleader, and she has done competitive cheer for nine years with uh, Silver Jacks All Stars, and also in Air Force. She's on varsity cheer. Our next student is Abigail Fisher. Abigail is interested in forensic science or college literature professor. Well, that is an interesting combination. Our next student, Ethan Jeffcoat. 
Ethan would like to be have a career in fulfilling and uh, being able to impact the world around me, preferably in the field of engineering. Elena Kaiser. Elena either wants to be an have an orchestra career or something along the lines of singing, poetry, or something in the arts. She really enjoys writing poetry and stories. And take note of that. Enjoy the feeling of making the world around her her home and coming up with characters. Our next student, Kaden Patea, is interested in psychology. I'm sure that is going to be a field that continues to grow. He likes to skateboard and listens to music and collects records and CDs. I guess you mean vinyls. Awesome. <laughs> Those are coming back for all of us old folks. Um, Scott Randolph is our next student. He wants to be an engineer. He's not sure which kind, but he's pretty sure he wants to be an engineer. So work hard, you're gonna need a lot of math and science. He plays science, video games, um, and enjoys magic. Awesome. Our next student, Bryson Vaughn. Bryson is interested in being a biomedical engineer. That's pretty cool stuff. He likes to play the cello and he likes to draw. He also likes spending time with his family and friends. Tobias Welch, come on up, you're our next student. He's interesting, interested in computer coding or something in the IT bill. <laughs> Pay attention to him. He's another one, will he? Um, he likes to play games and skate and he likes to watch YouTube, some of the videos. I watch Art of Computers, of course. And then Jacob Kaminsky. Jacob, I'm sorry, I don't have your sheet in front of me. What do you want to do when you grow up? A uh, chemist. Awesome. Probably. That's awesome. Very good. Casey Brightwell. Casey is interested in becoming a computer programmer with a concentration in animation. That is happening at the Innovation Center, so that's awesome. Edith Brooks um, wants to become a chemical engineer or something with NASA. And Dr. Brooks, they are both involved in our music and chorus concerts tonight, so I'm excited. Very good, thank you. Lily Branton. Lily, you'll come on up. Lily doesn't know what she wants to do. She's probably the most honest of all. <laughs> I'm sure, Lily, you will have all kind of opportunities before you. Um, she is a member of the Academic Challenge team and is, and is the winner of the Satoma Essay Contest. Josh Lindner. Josh wants to be a video game development designer, or something along those lines. It's growing bill. He is very good at chess. And he has played in the 8th grade quiz bowl and has been undefeated in 7th grade. Also enjoys video games. Harley McIver. Harley wants to be an orthodontist. She enjoys horseback riding and playing volleyball. Has played volleyball for the past few years and I assume will play next year, right? Very good. Caitlin Miller, our next student. Caitlin wants to be an attorney. When she grows up, she loves Broadway as well as soccer. Maggie Peterman. Maggie wants to be a vet. What kind of vet? A veterinarian. Yeah, but you have a specialized one on here that I'm not familiar with. Very good. That is cool. She's been accepted into the Governor's School for the Arts in the summer camp. Congratulations also for you on that. That also is outstanding. Mark Ritchie is our next student. He wants to be a mathematician. He also likes playing chess, and he has played um, in the, for the past two years chess tournament, played in two chess tournaments, and has won both of them. So congratulations to you on that. And you also have rank of star and scout. Mary Stewart is our next student. Her goal is to become a pharmacist when she grows up. She loves to read and is currently learning how to play the piano. Raven Taylor. 
wants to be an accountant. When she grows up, she's made the Pine Ridge basketball cheerleading team. She's made <coughs> math. And in the future, she wants to work with money. And I'm sure she also wants to have lots of <laughs> Bed Takar wants to be a dentist, a pharmacist, or maybe a surgeon. <laughs> He's not really sure at this point. All of those will be opportunities for you, I'm sure. He's good at math. He likes to play football, soccer, and basketball. Grayson Walker. Whitaker. Sorry, Whitaker. Grayson Whitaker. I apologize. <laughs> She wants to be a surgeon or possibly a different type of doctor. She enjoys playing volleyball, drawing, and doing student government. Amaya Walker, there we go, back to try, wants to work in the field of digital arts and design. She enjoys um, editing videos, doing photography, composing music, and playing the piano. I think that is all of our students. I guess anybody know? Someone who's been in education a long time, we know that our students don't get to where they are without a lot of support along the way. So students, let's give your parents a big round of applause. Yeah. And students, this is just the beginning. For a lot of you, school has probably come very easy. For some of you, the PSAT was probably fun because you like the challenge of trying to do well on tests. But I will encourage you, as you continue to go through high school and beyond, that it will get more challenging. So don't ever give up on yourself. Continue to push yourself and continue to strive and do well academically because you're well on your way. Now the next thing that I'm going to challenge you with is we want to get a picture. And so... <coughs> Ben, I think you're first. If you'll lead us out to the steps, we're going to grab a photo of all of you. And then parents, um, you also can grab them and enjoy the refreshments that's out there. Thank you sincerely for being a part of our recommended for <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> I don't know why. There you go, Lark. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 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 
Mr. Fanning was recognized as the president of the National Student Association of Philadelphia. She is the first national president of the state of South Carolina. And uh, several of us had the opportunity to be there. And uh, one of the times Mrs. Brown spoke, she had an impassioned plea for adults to support children and, and all children and making sure they're successful. And I think we've got that clear with the family of life.
My family's ties to public schooling in my community go way back because you see, Patty is my great great aunt. We share a common passion for education, and maybe there's a little family resemblance too. Thank you for taking that first step for children in our community. Now, each of us in this room is just one. Just one of our country's 90,000 school board members. Just one of the hundreds of thousands of school leaders and educators. And while those numbers seem large, and our collective power and voice is strong, <coughs> we need to remember the power that we each possess the power of just one school board member, or superintendent, or teacher, or assistant principal, and our impact on that just one child. In our work together and individually, we impact students' future, their chance to receive a quality public education, their chance to achieve their hopes and dreams. As it began in my hometown, and in so many of your towns across America, public education began because people believed in its power and what it can do for just that one child. <laughs> and our beliefs haven't changed. they just grown as children's dreams can and should grow. The very fabric of our country and the success of our nation comes down to the education of our children, our future scientists, and chefs, and leaders, and carpenters, and engineers, and teachers, and yes, even presidents. And so we carry the banner of the Aunt Hatties of the world, and we fight for each child who attends our public schools. The student living in or close to poverty. The student with special needs. The student who is being bullied. And the students who aren't getting the support they need and the opportunities they deserve. We know that with a good public education, each child can have a successful life. This one, and this one, and this one. And this one, and this one. Because at the end of the day, each and every child deserves the best public education possible. And to graduate from high school equipped to be successful in college or technical training or the military or the workplace. And each child deserves to have their hopes and dreams and minds to be filled. I could not be prouder to be a part of this association and to be leading the charge for public education at such an important time in our nation's history. We have a lot of work to do back in our associations, our school districts, and our communities. But all of this work, however, starts with each and every one of you. It is our collective voices and efforts that will make the difference in the lives of all children. And it all begins with just one of you. Look at what just one of Hattie did. That is us. That is me. That is you. We are all the just one person who will make the difference. I can't do it alone. I need each and every one of you to join the just one of me and stand by me for all our children in America. Thank you.
two more folks, Mr. Bingham, that I'd like to bring to the board's attention. Don, uh, you see this SCG Energy Wise for your business program and senior award. Um, while we were going, we got a notification that um, Don had, had written this grant. Uh, to date, we've got $290,000 out of that. So, Don, I appreciate that. I know the board does. And we also got a national publication notice while we were in Philadelphia. And Angela and Kevin were recognized, and Lexington, too, was recognized as the districts who were leading the way as um, innovators in the national publication for the model program that they put in place. So thank you, Don. Thank you, Angela. So we will move to unfinished business, discussion of policies on fundraising and on un online fundraising. Uh, Mr. Bingham, we were tasked with gathering information for the board and getting that information out. Uh, we have and uh, we're, we're just waiting for a direction. Okay. This was a um, this was tabled from the February meeting to tonight, so um, everybody's received the information. Is there anything? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman? Yes. I mean, I just, I understand the risks and I understand the protection that we need to take so we don't, you know, open Pandora's box, so to speak, but I just feel like that we all know that online is the way of the future of everything. It's so shall it be, and so it is right now with fundraising for activities and athletics and all those type of things. And um, I just really would like to see us kind of take a maybe deep dive look into that um, situation because I don't I don't want us I don't think our current policies I think they support it to some extent, but I don't really think they are as definitive perhaps as, as they should be and maybe as open as I think the future is going to be. So I don't really have a formal motion or anything other than um, perhaps I'd like to make a motion that the superintendent authorize a committee made of maybe some teachers, assistant principals, and parents and you know really look into what is out there and what we might be doing. Okay, we have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Discussion? Just being, um, I think when, if we go into um, that type of fundraiser, we're going to have a lot of issues. It's a lot of public information, it's a lot of the student information, and all of the names that are submitted that might be possible donors being submitted. And their information is going to be out there for anybody to purchase. And I will give you an example. Last year, my sister got a phone call from a former student who has a student uh, at Rock Hill. I want to say what school. Uh, at Rock Hill. And it's an athlete in the track program. And she asked if for financial support. She said, yes. Well, Lo and behold, in the next couple of days, we get a, she gets an email. And looking into the program that was handling the fundraiser, she decided not to participate. She fired off a check to the school directly because they were going to take 40% of the proceeds for nothing other than securing information and sending it out. So, um, fast forward to a year this year, and the student has graduated regularly last year. This year, we get another, Kay gets another notice of please contribute to the track program, and the student's gone. So, here they have the information, how to get, how to reach Kay, and she got done for another donation, and the student had already graduated. I just, I think it's, 
I think there's too many varmints out there that have made a possibility of a good thing bad and negative. And unfortunately, it's hard to weed out the good from the bad. And I think that we're going to be open up a can of worms if we get involved with that because one way or another, we're going to get shot. I just can't see this getting 100% legal people and right people. I think mean, in the long run, someone's going to get hurt, and of course, that's going to be like some schools to two. I just think it's too risky. And I think the safety of student information and other people's information is more valuable than worrying about it. Other comment? With, with what we have. And what you were saying, Beth, that's for clarification. The information has already been presented. You want, you, you're proposing that we, I guess, the committee needs to be formed. And to look at that information. Look closely at that and to vet out. I don't know how best to say it other than going back to what Ms. Kessler was saying that, you know, keep the garments out. Uh, but, but, but to ensure, I don't know how that, that can happen, how we could ensure that, that, uh, um, that they were all, you know, all cases would be weeded out. They may be good examples. Um, I say they may be, I'm sure there are uh, good examples there um, that we could, you know, you could focus in on, but then how those would be selected. You just trying to keep the door, I say keep the door open at least to, to look at it more closely. And I mean, I think we have a good policy now. It right. needs to be, make sure, we just need to make sure. That this, that this policy, like any other policy that's, that's out there, uh, is tended to as police properly. Um, so. I just don't want to slam the door shut. And I don't even know, um, but if perhaps I'm envisioning, because I do hear Ms. Kessler's concerns, and, and it's not, by the way, Ms. Kessler just from online. I mean, I can remember, you know, buying some and selling back in the day, you and me, to get gymnastics of course, and cheerleader uniforms and selling and see wrapping paper and all that, we were only getting, you know, 40%, I mean, all that. But maybe even, I guess that's why I would defer to Dr. James and his people, um, but maybe even have a, the committee would review the program fundraising that's recommended and look into it and see if it's a varmint or, you know, I don't know what I'm envisioning. I just don't want to slam the door. Okay. Another point, um, when you're working with students and you're working um, with marketing and product, the, first, the product has to be paid for. So I understand that that certain percentage of that profit goes to pay for the, pro pay for the product. But students also learn in that process. If, if they go out and they have to face someone head on, they learn how to communicate with one another. They learn how to problem solve. If the money doesn't tab up, they know how they they find out in the techniques of working and dealing with people, ironing out these situations. It's a teaching moment. Um, in the fundraising online, you've got a person that's there that's actually making profit for nothing other than communicating information across the line there's no they're not pay, they're not being paid for a product they're being paid for a service and just typing in if it, i'm not for opposing looking into that type of fundraising but i see more negative things about it than, than letting the kids sell a product and paying for a product i think they'll learn more i think they'll learn uh, how to take advantage of it at that moment
if you do online fundraising, you have to follow policy. So you can do online fundraising as long as you're following the policy. And one thing I would like <clears throat> for a district to look into, I mean, not necessarily policy, I, I think the policies we have are good. We compare them to a lot of other districts and we're very comparable to other districts. <clears throat> what I don't like is kids having to go out to fundraise. And the kids having to go door to door. In today's time, I hate seeing kids going out trying to raise money. I think the district could dig in and try to find some funds. Let's try to set some funds to the side. And I think there's avenues there that we can do that to, to fund some of these programs. And that's what I, I'd rather us look into something like that than sending kids out. The only, I mean, I got called the online thing to a school in Rock Hill. And the kid has been graduated for two years, and they continually keep sending, but and I think they just kind of share with other homeland people. Now I'm tired with other schools coming in, so I reckon they think I'm a gold or something. So they just keep saying, and that's just one thing you get on one list, you don't care about his list. And being a business owner, I think every kid in Lexington County has been knocking on the door. And so I think if we dig down, we might be able to find some maybe funds here where we don't have to send the kids out trying to reimburse. And that's what I would like challenge the district to look into trying to find the funds if they're both. Also keep in mind, I think that there's a lot of a lot of ways to fundraise. So if a group is, you know, they have a certain thing that they're wanting to purchase or they, you know, need funds for, then, you know, they can look at what 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 that's gonna cost and then, you know, plan a fundraiser that would, would meet that need. And there is a lot of, I mean, opportunity, especially with all of our new facilities um, to be able to, you know, use what we have to, you know, do some fundraising. So. Did you say specifically who the who the committee would be? Would I, I think in my motion I said Dr. James, you know, maybe pick some assistant principals and some. Maybe student council people, <coughs> put a school board member on there maybe. Cindy might be really good since, I mean, seriously, you know, to look at it. Um, I, I don't really have I've no preference. a lot of money in this in my 30 years. I've got no preference on the committee, but, you know, I, and I would like to like what Kevin's saying. I mean, I think, and to jump on with Christina, I mean, I think if we look at maybe as they want to make possibly two look dark things that are, you know, facilities usage and all that, that, I mean, just from, you know, different tournaments and things like that they could host, potentially, but, you know, we need to make sure our people are willing to work it. They might just raise the money by hosting things. Nobody goes door to door. Nobody goes online. I mean, you know, maybe look at all that. I'm just kind of deferring to you. Well, and, and we will do that. Um, and it has absolutely nothing to do with policy because we'll get the policy out. But Marty and I have spent every moment here working with the budget and the um, we met with Mr. Morton this week and um, we talked with the folks at the airport and two of the things that we're looking at, one is, first of all, right now in our draft budget, we've got $30,000 here marked for non-revenue sports. And um, we had very, uh, they didn't give us the numbers for those, but what, what I would like to see from the district in, in order to bring the district together and fund some of the lesser funded programs is challenge and Dixon to put together a Lexington II invitational band competition. Do one at the beginning of the season, one at the end of the season, one at airport, one at BC. They co host it and they split the proceeds. And then do the same thing with the cheerleading competition because both of those are high dollar events. And the idea is if you make it invitational, people want to do what they can. So if you get not invited, you'll work harder and pay more to get invited the next year. And both Airport and BC are in agreement with that. And Dixon thought that it was such a great idea that he's just running with it. So <laughs> <laughs> we can say a lot more. We've got.
got some other things in mind, Mr. Brown, that are ways that we can use our facilities that fall within the board policy and the showcase facility and fund what kids are doing. Sorry. Dr. James, I support exactly what you're saying. There are ways that you could cooperatively do a fundraiser and make a difference. But I don't want to take away from the policy. The policy is very well written. It covers a lot of the do's and the don'ts and the reporting. Now, I hope we don't lose that part of our... No, no ma'am. And, and both of those will be big events in the band and cheerleaders. Kind of that much more no matter what we budget for cheerleaders and nothing. Personal ladies, it's not enough. So, a cheerleading competition does bring in a lot of money. All the schools that we talk to, they, they make a lot of money because people come, they stay all day, they have lunch, they, you know, you have t shirts, you have all those sort of things. And then, band competition the same way they do all day. It showcases the facilities, it doesn't put an excessive amount of wear on the facilities, and it's easy enough to account for the finances coming through. The schools split the profit for the first one, they split the profit for the second one, and both schools were able to have their one fundraiser. But by doing it in conjunction, they end up with two, and they get a bigger amount of money, and they get not just the competitive piece fees, but food and admission and soft drinks and that sort of thing. So whatever the board decides to do with the possible will do, but what I will tell you is that we're trying to promote doing some things that are big, as a district, it showcases the district, but puts dollars back in, into programs that don't have another way to generate funds like gate revenues. So. Well, how about this then? Can I make a motion to table Mr. Bingham, my motion, and just keep this item on unfinished business and then just let Dr. James update us at the next meeting and maybe we'll just not do it. You know what I'm saying? Because if he comes up with Dixon's got things planned and all this, I mean, we may be good. So maybe if we just table it again. Leave it open. I mean, you know, I'll also, leave it open where they can look at it. And I agree with what Cindy says, but leave it open. Would you like to make a motion about a cheerleader competition? Mm -hmm. Community Dixon doesn't know anything about that. <laughs> I make a motion that Christine is in charge of the cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got a motion on the floor. We might need to have to first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got a motion and a, and a second to table this until a future meeting and allow Dr. James to just update on the progress of, of fundraising. So, any discussion on that? Being none, all in favor, say the public saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I would say. Um, so, that'll move to unfinished business at the next meeting. Um, next is new business consideration of request for out of state travel for district English language arts, social studies coordinator, instructional educator, instructional facilitator, and reading coach from Springdale, reading coaches from Casey and Congaree Wood, advancing student centered learning and goal directed teaching, reading and writing strategies and structures institute, July uh, 8th to 11th in Memphis, Tennessee. Mr. Chairman, yes, I make a motion that. We approve items A and B, which is also an out-of-state travel request for an employee, and we take them as a group, and I move that we um, accept it as recommended by the administration. Approved. We have a motion in a second, in a second to approve the out-of-state travel for both items A and B. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, next on our agenda is consideration of revisions to administrative rule JKAR grading and assessment system. And it would have been absolutely fine if you had thrown in C. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. James, um, back in June of 2016, this uh, policy was first established. The, the Department of Education has made some changes. You have made those changes along the way. Um, tonight, we're coming to ask um, for changes at the, only at the top part of the first page. And the reason that we're doing this is our younger students, um, K through two, 
um, are students that are typically better assessed for their learning through um, performance-based activities rather than paper and pencil. So what we would like to do is rather than continue to use the E, S, and N for each subject, to actually use a more standards-based report card. Um, and so we have changed the language at the top of that policy to say kindergarten through grade two, student progress in kindergarten through grade two is reported to all students using performance ratings. Current levels of performance and achievement are assessed based on knowledge, understanding, and skills as compared to national and state standards. And in grades three through 12, we should continue to use um, the unified grading policy, which is 100, 90 to 100. So. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve first and second reading of policy IKAR grading assessment systems with the recommended changes for grades K through 2. We have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Have a second by Mr. Keith. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Next is consideration of draft capital and products improvements funds. Mr. Chair, members of the board, Dr. James, uh, we have presented to you previously a draft of the capital improvements uh, fund, uh, which is part of how we pay back our, our bond referendum, but also how we take care of our facilities and uh, we made some minor adjustments to that uh, from last month but uh, we ask that you approve the CBIF budget as presented tonight for $7,747,433. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we accept the recommendation of administration to approve the CPIF budget as presented. And we have a motion to have a second. Second. Second by Ms. Wheat. And a question. So, Don, does the, um, and I'm looking on with Ms. Wood because I've packed my packet tonight. I'm moving tomorrow. Um, so the AHS 700 lien project, there's some money on that and this. And I know we're going to have another item that deals with that too. Is that money in conjunction with that or is that separate or what's the deal on that? Yes, ma'am. We, uh, in talking with the contractor and architect all the way through the process, we realized that we were going to go over budget slightly. Uh, in fact, uh, we're going to be presenting to you the GMP tonight, and we're still going to need to take a little more money out of the uh, uncommitted bond funds in order to do what we need to do uh, in, the, in these projects. <clears throat> but it's similar to what we've done elsewhere. One of the things that we're not going to be doing at airport so much as we did it at Brooklyn Casey, uh, if you've been by there, they're installing fence now, security fencing. We're not going to have to do so much security fencing because we're enclosing the courtyard of walkways from one building to the next, which was the biggest concern for that school. Uh, so combine that with the access controls that we're going to be putting in uh, and also the cameras that we've upgraded and and the various things that we've done along those lines. Uh, the principal and the architect and I all feel that uh, we will accomplish what we need to do without installing that type of fence. We feel that there will be a couple of areas where that we will probably need to uh, install some additional fencing. But other than that, we think we will accomplish it with the, the program that will be, or the plan that will be presented to you tonight. And also just, I think, for the record, some of that money is also included from the insurance, right? It's yes. going to help for this project, so it's not, I mean, that's probably why you're going over, but you're not really going over because some of the money, I'm assuming that we have set aside was fire insurance money, so I think it washes out in the end to give them the extra. That's correct, and we, we uh, you know, the former project has been, uh, the contractor there has done an exceptional job, and I think we're going to be getting back close to a half million dollars in contingency on that project, plus they're ahead of schedule with all the rain that we have had. So uh, if you couple that with the $90,000 we just got on this energy grant, we're really going to be close to washing out even. Uh, if you remember, you know, we, had, we had put some additional money in at Brooklyn Casey, 
simply because that was one of the last jobs that we did. The costs escalated to the point where we just couldn't accomplish what we needed to accomplish. And we, we, we were able to take care of a lot of airports needs early on, but now we're in the same situation. The costs have gone up and, and there are more needs than, uh, than we, uh, that we need to take care of. That we can't afford because of the cost escalation. Do you know we've got activity bus replacements and in parentheses one bus and two box trucks? Are those box trucks going to be used for activities or for uh, what we've done there, uh, Ms. Kessler, we talked to the principals of uh, both of the high schools and uh, we use activity buses basically to haul equipment, the football games, the band and all that stuff. So we talked about, you know, is there a better way for us to do this rather than ripping up bus seats and all that. So we feel like these activity, bu uh, the activity buses will get used more properly with us purchasing these box trucks and, and, and hauling the equipment in these box trucks as, as much as we can. Anybody else? All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the CPI budget of $747,433. $747, All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Um, next is consideration of painting of music in gym wings of Fulmer Middle School. Okay, this is uh, something that was not that wasn't in the guaranteed maximum price that uh, we presented to you previously, and um, so we felt it would not make a whole lot of sense to to basically turn over a brand new school to these school to these students when they come back in August and leave a portion of it unpainted. Uh, so we wanted to go back and, and, and just finish everything while we were there. We've included in your packet a, a sheet that gives the breakdown of everything that's included for middle to paint. But we'd like to ask that you approve the contract to contract construction in the amount of $46,400 to finish painting uh, all of that facility. I want to take a motion. I'll we'll make a motion to award contract to contract construction in the amount of $46,400. Motion to our second. Second. Second on this one. Two. Any discussion? Being done, all those in favor say the saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah, I'll hear you. Motion carried. You can second. Um, Next on our agenda is consideration of Airport High School 700 wing renovation and breezeway additions. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the board, Dr. James, we have with us uh, Jordan Seats, who's going to help uh, in the presentation tonight with his dad being uh, on another project. And also, Glenn Dillon is going to be representing contract construction. And uh, we're going to just show you what we plan to do. Uh, with the final phase of renovation and additions at uh, Airport High School. Thank you, Mr. Eisenhower, Mr. Chairman, Dr. James, members of the board. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight to uh, present the, an update on Airport High School. So just to kind of orient everyone, this is the, the site plan of airport. So at the top of the screen, Boston Avenue, uh, broad entrance, cafeteria area, 700 uh, building. So this project includes a complete renovation of the 700 building, uh, enclosing the existing cover sure. wall. Can you turn those lights back on? Thank you. It's enclosing uh, the existing cover walks that connect the classroom wings, uh, and also painting the existing uh, classrooms and the athletic areas uh, down towards the gym area, um, and replacing the existing court boards in the classrooms with new water boards and uh, flat panels. Uh, in addition, we'll be addressing the, uh, the emergency vehicle access around the site. So uh, we'll be creating new uh, pathways for the emergency vehicle to get uh, within 200 feet of all areas throughout the building. Um, so we've been working closely with OSF, uh, the local fire marshal, uh, working uh, going through the plans and they approved the life safety site plan that we have in place uh, for Airport High School. 
This is the floor plan of the 700 building. So uh, work in this area includes new HVAC, new electrical, new finishes, um, and we'll be adding a new group um, ADA accessible uh, group toilet. Uh, 7,000 square foot fitness and wellness space. Uh, new ROTC space that includes classroom space and office space for Sergeant Major and his staff. We'll also have a ROTC drill area that will include uh, an indoor practice uh, shooting range with an armory and a uniform storage. And we've met with Sergeant Major and uh, this space will meet all the requirements that his ROTC program, uh, for his ROTC program. This is a rendering of the uh, enclosed corridor that we'll be creating and uh, replacing the existing covered walks. So this will address the, um, the safety and security of the students where they'll be able to walk you know, from the front entrance of the school all the way down to the gym area and then enclosed and secure uh, building. Is that the or is that the breezeway there? So that, yeah, that's where the existing breezeway was. So we're going to be enclosing that, adding uh, you know, a storefront of glass. You know, the brick will match the existing brick on the high school. So that's, that's that rendering, and we'll have three of those. Okay. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to, uh, to Glenn to go over the, the pricing for the project. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, James, Mr. Ford. Jordan did a really good job going through everything. I think one of the things that I could add John um, talked about would be the turf grass outside the weightlifting area and uh, the renovation or repurposing of the existing ROTC room as to, to be serving for the offices and things that are needed. Uh, I think if I hand out more of that, it pretty much goes through everything that George just went through with a little more detail on the scope for each individual area. That walkway rendering that you're seeing, there are three of those to take the place of the, the covered walkways right now. Those are completely enclosed in conditioned spaces with security cameras front and back. Uh, they have doors, fire doors on either end, the pole open them, and give access, limited access, in and out of the courtyard. We're also doing some work in the courtyard area to make it a little more palatable, and I think they're kind of in gift right now. Uh, some work and more detail are doing in the 700 building. Everything in there we're through, it will be conditioned space. Everything in there will have air conditioning. Uh, we're repainting everything. Uh, we're getting new ceilings everywhere that has ceilings right now. And the shop areas, we're, re we're repainting the top parts of those and making those acceptable for flex space as well as the wellness area. Uh, all new LED lights, a revitalization of the existing floor finishes in there. Some new floors, some just tweaking what's in there, making it better. Uh, new fire sprinkler system throughout the model, new fire alarm system we have purchased earlier to go through there. We're repainting the canopies and replacing one of the canopies down at the end that's just too far gone uh, with a new aluminum canopy on the existing frame. That being said, the GMP number for this work is $3,938,888. So Mr. Chair, we recommend that you approve or award the contract, contract construction in the amount of $3,938,888. $938,888. I'll entertain a motion. Um, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the administration's recommendation of awarding the contract uh, to the contract construction in the amount of $3,938,888. I'll motion to have a second. I'll second. I'll second by Mr. Keith. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman. First of all, George, you can tell your dad you can come back anytime you do much better than he does. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have a question, and not to complicate the project, that's, that's, I'm sure I'm going to vote for that. But have we looked at all into, or do we might want to look into it, and this is just because um, Joe Wilson has told me this for like years now, that we have such a big opportunity since all the trees got cut down that to put some sign or something really nice looking on the kind of over by the softball field, the back the part of the airport's campus, so that when people, I mean, everybody who's landing, coming into Columbia, South Carolina, can see, hey, this is Lexington II's airport high school, you know, you see what I'm saying? Because otherwise, if people drive by, they're like, oh, look, there's a 
feel. There's this, uh, I think that's just a key, and, and probably not under this, unless you want to go in for free. Um, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I just think there's a key opportunity, you know, whether it was the back of the scoreboard on the football field, there's some opportunity to really make a statement about, hey, this is our school, and this is what you're looking at when you come into Columbia, South Carolina. I just, I think that's a big deal to a lot of people, and I just want to see if somebody can look into it. I think you'll have plenty of opportunity to do something like that in future years with CPIF funds. Uh, this budget, though, is very tight. And uh, in fact, you know, you mentioned previously, I'll give you a little bit of a breakdown. We had $2 million left over from previous projects that we, we did. Uh, we had $800,000 roughly in fire damage that we got insurance back on. We had $250,000 in this year's CPIF. We had $180,000 in last year's CPIF for paying. So all total, we're going to need about $700,000 from the uncommitted funds that we talk and present to you uh, each, each month. So, uh, and, and again, we're going, to, we're going to get close to half a million dollars, we think, from the former uh, contingency. And with the remaining that we got from SCG, we're only going to need $110,000 and we're even on all of it. So uh, that's, that's kind of where we are with it. We got a good plan. Originally, we weren't. We didn't think we were going to be able to afford to do all that we're doing. And I told Glenn, I said, Glenn, I don't want to take this board uh, a plan that doesn't finish the job. So I said, I want us to at least look at how much it would cost to finish it. And, and they've done that, and they've done an excellent job of getting through all of that. And, and I appreciate that very much. And, and what you will have is you will have all of the space in that 700 wing when you finished. And, um, usable. and usable. The, 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 it won't be totally finished because just like at, at Brooklyn and Casey, we won't have the money put flooring down in that um, fitness and wellness area. Uh, so that's something we'll have to come back and do later. Or you know, if the school decides they want to do something on their own, they'll be able to do that. There's a possibility we can do it with contingency uh, later in the project. We may be able to do it with contingency in our CPIF funds. <laughs> So we'll just continue to kind of keep good tabs on that money. And it is something that I think we would like to do is to put forward so they can utilize those spaces as, as much as possible. It's neat. Yeah, I think it's neat. There's no question. Uh, tell me a minute about the doors that are on these corridors. It seems like we're doing we're closing that for the safety of the students, yet we have doors. So we have those doors for uh, Security, you know, so those students can can get out and the means of egress get out of those corridors. So these doors will have hands on where they're, they're, they're necessary. necessary. And I understand that did you have to have a port because of fire reasons. Right. But students are also notorious of putting rocks and books and leaving doors open so that other kids can come in or other people can come in. How do you prevent? I think these are, are these from tip break or not? They're being monitored from either end with the cameras. They are, and, and uh, Ms. Kessler, to answer your question, one option that we could do that we have not done uh, is you could put uh, an alarm on that door that would basically send emails and stuff to the administration. I would think that would be necessary for this. I don't know why, but I just think it, it's. I think it's something that if it becomes a problem, the district may want to come back and do it. And, and, and all, speaking of that, all that is, I say all that, talk about security measures, all that is included where whatever we have at airport now, any school when we're doing it, you go back to wherever your base station is for your security system and, and it's just, it, I guess it's robust enough to accommodate the additional Frankly, whatever you need for all the doors and monitors you're having the hallways. That, I didn't see that when I was looking through here a while ago. Well, any, any additional for sure? There will be some additional work that will need to be done at airport. We have not addressed access controls and all of that stuff. We also have uh, <coughs> put in, you know, the, and I don't want to disclose a whole lot of information except to say that we have it. We've been putting the, uh, the uh, film on glass the glass areas so that it slows down intruders um, and statistics tell us if we can slow that intruder down by 20 seconds it tremendously improves the chances of no one getting hurt 
So we, we will be doing that as well. So we will be coming back to you again with some additional things that we want to do like we've done out everywhere else. So this is not everything, but it's close. Mr. Summers, uh, we got a notification Dawn got a $60,000 safety grant today. So there will be another part of $60,000 doesn't address the whole district, but it the little pots together to do the things that Don's talking about. So It'll come close to finishing out what we need to get it to we, We've done just about everything. When you, when you compare where we are with everybody else, we're way ahead of them. I, I noticed the area is going two to 700 wings. Would that be secured any kind of way with some fence or anything? That's also the one I think he was speaking to is needing something done there. And also the steps there. The rails, we can put rails up where the cross tie, the railroad tie. Cross tie is coming. Just a rail so the kids won't fall. Get a rail on top of it. Safe rail on top, seven foot, 12 inch wide. So that is addressable. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. 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 We've got two new catch basins going in, some additional drainage, and we're creating actually the footing exposed on one of those buildings on that end. Try to bring in the dirt and fill that back up and take it down. There's a little retaining wall that needs to be turned back in so that it doesn't continue to erode behind it. There's, there's several little things that we're, we're going to try to address. Good bit more scope than what I put on the paper, but I'm going to ask any questions or talk about it. Most of you have my email address to send this on. I'll be happy to meet with you and talk to you. Ms. Brandon, I like your idea that when you're talking about what, what look at what you see now from 302. Uh, like when the airport cleared that, all of a sudden it's like there's a high school over there. Right. But that's, that's a, yeah, it's, it's a good idea though to when you do have additional funding to look at. Just to make sign there. Yep. And, and just to make sign on that. Yeah. Uh, logo and landscape or something. <coughs> wouldn't even have to be that because it's, you're looking at it such a distance. I don't think that would really be literally a billboard would, would do the trick looking from the road over. The bank scoreboard. That's all you see when you come out of the airport. But if it's a softball field, you could have on this side of the foot, on the outside of the foot of the softball field. Free work for you. Free well, work. I think we're able to find some money. See how we can find some money. Free work. 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 Free did a study of the noise affecting the airport campus. The time they did it, there was a huge tree bump in there. And they said there was no screening required for the airplanes taking off and landing, causing disturbance to the school. And since they've now cleared the area, that buffer is no longer there. We need to ask the airport to look at that to make sure that they are not creating a noise problem for our students and the campus. Well, all right, we have a motion and a second for the award of the contract to do contract construction in the amount of three million nine hundred thirty eight thousand eight hundred eighty eight dollars. No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Next on the agenda is consideration of transportation contracts. Mr. Chair, we, we provide you with a little information in the ride up there. In, in the past, we have uh, probably done more transportation with, with our activity buses than we probably should have been doing. So, uh, we're, unless you advise otherwise, that's been a, it's been a, a bit of a money maker for transportation office. Uh, and that's part of how they keep up their uh, fleet. 
but I, I think we're going to look at some additional funding sources and try to make sure that uh, you know we use our activity buses for the intended purpose. But anyway, we we would like to continue to do the uh, the contracting that we do with um, the community college, uh, with Midlands Tech, and uh, mostly hauling high school students students through uh, the upper bound program. So we present you with information on that in your packet, and also a letter from our attorney, Mr. Moore, uh, that I think says that he's in favor of doing that. When we had two other ones that uh, we talked about, we decided that uh, it probably was in our best interest not to continue to do those uh, contracts with calling students to and from football games in South Carolina, not our students, but college students. Uh, there's one of them. <coughs> I can't remember the other one, but anyway, we, we do feel that the Midlands Tech one is something that we would like to continue to keep uh, doing. So we ask that you approve that contract. I will make a motion. A motion to approve the contract is recommended by administration with Midlands Tech to provide bus service for the summer programs. Okay, we have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Key. Any discussion? Yes, sir. If you read this letter from Jay, he is telling us, I didn't see him put the approval on the contract with Midlands Tech, but he certainly warns us of issues that can arise from this. And when this board approves it, it's not going to fall on Dr. James. It's going to fall on us. Um, and we will not be held harmless. We're going to be sued if anything happens. The idea of being able to finance the fleet sounds very good, and I'd like to be in favor, but I certainly don't want to be caught with our pants down and get sued and lose on this deal over supporting this. I, I didn't read it, and maybe I misread it, but I tried to read it carefully. I didn't realize Jake said to go ahead and, not that I, I wouldn't go ahead with Don, because I certainly put him at the top, but um, I don't want us to be in a legal position with this at all. Bill, to be. I mean, I thought you had approved the Midlands Tech. I approved the other. I, I understand the transportation service to be in connection. There's some exposure there. I think you would say, Mr. Mora, and you know, we discussed that, and there, I think there's going to always be some exposure anytime you do something like that. We, we, we have, we had, we spent a good bit of time talking about this. You know, the deal with Midlands Tech is we have an educational relationship with Midlands Tech. We have a corresponding program for them. Our students go there. Um, if that's an educational purpose. <coughs> our facilities being used for educational purposes seem to me to make sense. We would still be covered by the insurance and we'd be covered by the caps. The caps, there's a uh, state government cap, so your liability is going to be capped at $300,000 per incident. Um, but you have insurance that should cover anything of that nature. As long as you're within the purview of something that's legitimately an educational opportunity, I think you're okay. When you start using buses as, in effect, a common carrier, hauling people from here to Carolina and so forth, I think you've got problems. When you read the contract with Business Tech, I know that they're going to assume the responsibility and have the insurance for it. Have you ever worked with an upper bound program? Any of you? There's a lot of social trips for that, for exposure purposes, to expose children to things that they haven't had the opportunities to. There's a lot of. You, you've got two layers of insurance coverage that would basically apply. You've got the insurance coverage that would be available through the middle of the state, and you've got the insurance coverage that we pay for with the budget. You, clearly should have adequate insurance coverage. Now, can I tell you 100,000% that, you know, there's never going to be an exposure here? The answer to that obviously is no. Uh, does the potential benefit uh, compared to the, the risk uh, 
make sense. Don and I discussed it. We felt like it did. Mr. Chief, but it's a policy Mr. consideration. Wait, 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 one second. Can we? Can I make a motion to table this and then perhaps get legal advice in executive session? Because I, I don't want to. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Maybe if we get some more additional. Um, advice in executive session, then we could perhaps vote on this at the end of the meeting. Would that be in order? Okay. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to table the executive session for receipt of legal advice. We've got a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, we move to consideration of bid for demolition of Brandy. Mr. Chair, uh, we put this out for bid. We had good coverage. I think there were we had nine bidders, and uh, we'd like to ask that you award the contract to Thompson Building Wrecking. Uh, they're out of the best of Georgia in the amount of $435,000. Motion to approve the uh, administration's recommendation to award a contract for demolition of the facility at $435,000. The facility being granted. Got a motion to have a second. I'll second. Second by Mr. Peter. Any discussion? <coughs> being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, Consideration of Brooklyn Casey High School marker boards, electrical drop for Promethea boards, installation of new display boards, and textures for classrooms, and removal of casework in the ceilings in room 216. Mr. Chair, once again, uh, we are looking at uh, repainting this entire facility, and we just felt like it made sense to take all the whiteboards down, all the court boards down. Uh, we've had teachers tell us uh, through the principals that rather than putting up bulletin boards that we were all familiar with, that they would prefer cork strips around the room so that they could post student work and that sort of thing. So uh, that's part of what we're trying to accomplish here is uh, we just want to give everyone a good fresh look when they come back in August so this work will be done uh, through, the, through the summer. So uh, this is one of the things that we did not include in the scope of work when we were working with Thompson Turner. So we'd like to ask that you approve uh, or award the contract to Thompson Turner in the amount of $38,476.80 to do this work. Motion to approve the contract to Thompson Turner in the $38,476.80 to do the work at Brooklyn High School. Motion to have a second. I'll second. Second by Mr. King. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Motion to approve out of state student travel requests. I'll second. A motion by Ms. Brandon. We have a second by Mr. King. Any discussion? Yes. Every single month I have to address it. I cannot believe the principal signed these Dagon requests when there are so many grammatical errors and spelling errors. It irritates me no end that I, I, I don't understand how, how you can approve anything that you've read through and, and there's so many errors. Please make sure that they're correct when they are submitted. Competition. Anybody, anybody else? All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we move to administrative divisional reports. Um, first would be the instruction on standard based report cards. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Dr. James, members of the school board of Lexington II. Let me begin by asking you a question. I'm going to ask you a question. When is the last time you heard parents, teachers, or students say, Woohoo, it is report card time? Yes. Or perhaps when I say report cards, 
does this bring back memories? <laughs> or perhaps you know someone with this mindset. <laughs> okay? And so in order to positively impact this mindset, a team of us here in the instruction department began exploring um, standards-based report card, which you have a sample of tonight. Um, what is standards-based grading or standards-based report card? It just, <laughs> it, it's just what it says it is. It's measuring students' proficiency on well-defined learning objectives and or our standards. And these are our, our state standards. I'm going to talk about five benefits very briefly. Number one, it provides meaning to grades. Instead of the E, S, N, G, U, that Dr. Brooks referred to earlier, without meaning other than just your letter grade, this really can provide information to parents, students, and teachers about how they're performing based on the standards in their content area. It's going to keep the students and the teachers accountable. Okay? Again, rather than be subjective with our E, S, N, I, as a teacher, am going to say, how is the student doing on this standard, on this standard? It's going to allow them to really know their students as readers, writers, mathematicians, historians, scientists. Um, it's also, along the same lines, going to provide better feedback for, for students and for parents. We have many times parents say, what can I do to help my child? And so this will be a roadmap, if you will, about mastery for that particular grade level. So we're excited about that. Along the same lines, it will help teachers uh, be better equipped to provide differentiation based on where any group of my students are at at any particular time. I can have small group in instruction based on what they do or do not know toward the standards. And then also, just like it says, uh, this will help track that mastery. Um, if they're not going to get it in quarter one, then how are they progressing in quarter two? So again, it's that roadmap, if you will, again, based on our state standards. Our uh, standards-based report card team began developing our early childhood prototype based on input and examples from our neighboring districts. And because I know one of you uh, really well, I'm going to briefly address some questions that may be rolling around in your head. Okay? One question may be, why focus on just 4K through 2nd grade at this time? We in the future may consider 3, 4, and 5, but at this time, 4K and 5K already have something similar to this based on standards. And so the parents are finding it very useful as far as what is it exactly my student knows, what is it exactly they, they need, to, need to learn next. And um, also, first grade students then that will be first grade next year, this will really be a continuation of what they've had in 4K and 5K. So this will really mainly affect our second grade parents and students they really may not be as familiar with, with this type of uh, a template, if you will. And so that's where our training, our, our rollout is really going to focus on. We're going to be providing to parents um, uh, at the beginning of the year, even over the summer when they register, uh, a parent information sheet, if you will, that they can be put in back to school packets, uh, parent meeting greets, open houses will be available to speak at SIC meetings, PTO meetings, to really explain to parents especially um, what this means for their students. We're really excited about the information that it's going to give us all. Now the question you may have is, um, how will parents then track progress of their students' um, mastery throughout the year? It will continue as, as, as we do now. Teachers will be responsible for communicating with parents uh, through uh, weekly folders, class dojo, phone calls. Um, what about teacher buy-in, you may ask? Well, I was really excited. All of our teachers in K-4 uh, through second grade have had an opportunity to look at um, said sample. And um, I would like to just read for you some of their feedback. One teacher says, I like how the STEM-based report card informs the parents of specific skills their children need to know. One teacher says, I like being able to show the progression and growth explicitly related to our standards. And then another teacher says, this idea is great. I think it will give all of us, talking about teachers, a better understanding of where our kids are and where they need to go next. So again, just some, some uh, brief uh, feedback from, from, our own, from our own teachers. Can the wording be changed to make it parent, easier for parents to read? We had a lot of discussion about this. Um, but we wanted to create a report card that would stay true to the intent of the standards. 
We did have to uh, tighten up a little bit as each line really uh, allowed us to, to have about 65 characters. And so what we're going to do then along with that, our pacing guides support this. There's more information for pacing guides. We're also going to create a support document, if you will, that will help teachers refer back to, well, what is exactly is the difference between a three and a two on this particular standard? So we want to be very explicit, very transparent, and not be a subjective. Um, another question may be, how will teachers be held accountable for grades? Teachers will enter a three, two, or one. You see that at the top there. Three, two, or one for each standard into power school at the end of the nine weeks. The expectation is that teachers will keep evidence or documentation of each student's progress toward the standards, which could be checklist, it could be anecdotal notes of performance, it could be assessment scores. <coughs> that way, uh, when they share with parents, I went through teachers uh, meet with every parent uh, at the end of the first nine weeks. And so this will be an opportunity to further explain where their students are at uh, on the progression of standards, um, if you will. Moving forward, uh, we will be finishing translating uh, these into Spanish. Uh, we plan to build on lessons learned for this coming year based on feedback from all stakeholders and plan to align third, fourth, and fifth grade in the future in the same way. We're excited about this endeavor and we know, especially kind of following on the heels of Ms. Branham's earlier thoughts, that this is going to positively impact our instruction and student achievement here in Lexington too. Standards-based report card in K4, K5, first and second. I will be glad to entertain any comments or questions at this time. Yes, Ms. Brown. I called y'all for moving in this direction because I feel like, especially maybe not that page, but on the other page, it was like count by fives to you know 100 or whatever it was. Um, that's something that's real for a parent to be able to say, oh my gosh, my kid got a one on that. Well, I'm going to spend the nine weeks at home. We're going to learn how to count to 100 by fives or whatever the thing is. And so I think it's something that can help parents learn to help their children a little bit and make them, because the old report cards will space it. I didn't know what an E meant better than an N or an, I mean, I know what an N meant. Somebody's going to get spanking probably. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, you know, S, E, you know, we have teachers sometimes say, well, I'm not giving an E because nobody's excellent, so everybody's just going to be satisfactory, but it, it was not meaningful on the same exactly. level. Exactly. So we're going to move forward with this with your blessing, and um, we will report, we look forward to reporting back how things are going uh, throughout the year next year. Any other comments or questions? We thank you for your support. Thank you. Great job. <laughs> analysis. Again, on this one, we are under um, where we were this time last year, so that's a good thing. But we're still in very good shape uh, going into the last part of the year. The report you have in your packet <coughs> activity funds. Uh, this is for each school and shows a overall total that they have available. <clears throat> and our last report is your capital projects commitments. This is what uh, Mr. Eisenhower was talking about where we'll need to um, approve additional commitments for Airport High School. That will be reflected in your April report next month at the board meeting. So the bottom right corner, that $5.2 million will be reduced by the additional 700000 commitment to Airport.
any questions on any of the reports? Any valid objections in the month of the to report for standing proofs and committees? Marty's done an outstanding job working on our budget. I, I'll tell the board that up front. Um, it, it's made my job real easy. Um, we, we do have some things included in the budget that we talked about earlier. We're, we're looking at funding non-revenue sports, $30,000. <clears> that's based on expenditures at high schools from from past year, and that's, that's the folks who have absolutely no way of, of collecting gate receipts that would be large enough to help run their programs, and we can give you a list of that. Um, right now, we feel pretty good with our budget. Um, Mr. Bingham gave me a, a little news that we may have a hold of, but we based our budget on the Senate version, which you now I will go back over to the House and They'll do whatever they do, but at the Senate version, uh, we have our budget in, in what we feel is good shape. And, uh, we've, we've come up with a standardized way of distributing funds to, to the school so that it's not an arbitrary uh, kind of way of distributing funds. Basically, middle schools and elementary schools can get $75 based money per pupil. Um, that's it. Principal discretionary account, high schools will get a hundred dollars. Then we'll add on extra dollars for children of poverty, ESOL students, dual credit students. So the reality is there is a formula that will be ongoing that the board can say this is how we fund schools and it makes sense and, and gives principals some guidelines on the academic side of, of how to spend the funds. Um, we're looking at reduction in how do we get an optimum class size at the elementary level and the middle school level and what does an optimum size look like in the high school. So we feel good about the budget. Uh, we do have some information that came from Frank Rainwater about um, the, the percentage that the board uh, could increase if, if they chose to. You need a copy of that letter regardless of what you do. But, all in all, I think we're at a place now where we need to start thinking about sitting with the board, telling you what we have. We've got a lot of things included that the principals asked for, quite honestly, more than we, we anticipated. Um, but I feel good about where we are and, and whenever you all would like to look at it. If you have specific questions about where we are, uh, I'll be glad to answer them. What I can't answer, I'm sure. I will let the board know what I shared with Dr. James right before the meeting was that my understanding is we probably are not going to have a state budget until June 25th, but they're going to sign and die out, but they're not coming back from June 25th to approve the budget. So. We won't know for sure what we got until that point in time. So it'll kind of be like we were last year. Well, it's going to be like the 11th hour of getting the final budget approved before we can approve our budget. But they passed a continuing re resolution so that if they sign and die out, and then if they don't pass anything when they come back on June 25th, then it just continues from last year's budget. But um, that's my understanding is it will be June 25th no matter what, until we hear what the final budget's going to be. Any questions about our process or anything else? So would we do like final reading after June 25th then? Or uh, do we need to work on vacation times over this summer? Um, or we well, just do a first and second reading attending upon what we believe? We, we can discuss the, the that maybe once they sign it out, we'll have a little better idea. But the problem will be is that they don't announce what the budget numbers are. You've got a Senate version, you've got a House version, and it could be anywhere in between the Senate or the House version when they finally do conference committee. But if they're not going to do it until 
June 25th, we won't know what those numbers are, and that could make an impact on what the final budget is. I think the answer to Beth's question is just we could have first and second reading. We have to have a hearing. We've got to have a hearing. We've got to have first reading, then we've got to have a hearing before second reading. Can't we have the hearing essentially if, if you got the information in, did you have the hearing before? Technically we could, but if the budget changes, then that would be a problem. If, if we assume one or the other and then it changed, that would be... So, should I not schedule vacation the 26th through the 30th? Is that what... <laughs> right now, that's probably the... I mean, that would be a good idea to not do that. Um, but, you know, we have to react to what they do, but certainly we can't publish the budget one thing, and then if they change it and we have to modify, then we kind of... We've got to redo what we put out if we're... One thing to keep in mind, the, the salary part of the budget is not disputed. I think they're the same in the House and the Senate version. I think the only piece that's different is that state aid to classrooms, and it's, it's not a lot of money difference in that. So I think between the two versions, you're not looking at a, a large sum of difference between them as we reflect in our budget. So. I agree with you, we don't know that piece of it, but the salary portion is the same. They're using the same salary scales in both the House and the Senate version. And 85% and of our budget is, is salary. Okay. So, uh, but Dr. James, you're ready to go, right? <coughs> I, I'm ready to talk to the board, yes, ma'am. Uh, we, we, but again, you know, I don't, I don't want to get discount what Mr. Bingham said. We based our budget that we have now House version. If it came back, it could be the Senate version, and we could be on the House and the Senate version. We could be on the Senate version. The Senate version. But if it, they went with the House version, it would be some difference. The 85% of our budget would not be different, but the 15 could be. So, but we feel good in the fact that things that have not been funded in the past have been able to, and, and that's that's our goal. And we have we have some formulas that that say we understand that if you've got a gifted and talented child, it takes a little more money for that classroom, or if you've got an ESOL student, or whatever. So. Any other questions? That's all we That's all we have. All right. Um, anybody else have any questions on the budget? All right. So we move to construction update. Mr. Chair, we uh, provided you with information uh, again in your packet that we will make public uh, <coughs> as soon as uh, we can in the next couple of weeks. We have it. Mr. Cougar will be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Anybody have any questions? I think there is one in pending question on a couple hundred students. Um, is it air, the two couple hundred students asking, is the air conditioner working in the case center for a problem Saturday? Yes, sir. <laughs> be happy. I gave you a, I left a phone number. It's not working Saturday morning before you call. You can have it out here if they don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's Don Eisenhower's number. <laughs> they will be happy. It's, it was working today. And we're hoping it'll be working tomorrow. And uh, we, we've got someone's going to call us if it is. And we have amendments from the folks that work on it that they will be there. It is. We know the prom is very important out there. So. All right. No questions on that. Then we're going to move to our next side of executive session. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that the board of trustees enter closed session for the following item. Consideration of personnel appointment and resignation. Consideration of property matters. Consideration of contractual matters. Consideration of consideration of item distribution matters. We have a motion for the state session of the second. 
Second. All those favor signal saying aye. Aye. Two steps to get up, two steps to sit back down.